Welcome to another video. As you can see here, I have the coilover from the Mustang sitting up here. At Nationals, I was talking to some other people about the JRI shocks, and they mentioned that they kind of have a tendency to lose nitrogen pressure over time. And that is something that I wasn't really aware of. And I've been running these shocks for almost two years now. And they said, yeah, you should definitely probably check the nitrogen pressure in there to verify that it hasn't leaked down uh, too much. And that could cause some handling problems if the nitrogen pressure gets too low in the, in the shocks. Now shocks are something that I don't know that much about. So I turned to the all knowing internet to kind of look up some things. So in here is nitrogen and oil. The nitrogen is in there to basically prevent cavitation of the oil from air bubbles forming in the oil, which would then affect their performance and the consistency of the shock itself. It is not a tuning method. Any uh, making the shock stiffer or uh, softer should all be done with the spring, not the nitrogen pressure, but you can get a little bit of uh, things from the nitrogen pressure. So there is on the dyno sheet says how much nitrogen pressure should be in the shocks. And you can kind of play around with that value from what I've uh, heard and read to kind of get a little bit better um, ride out of it or better performance and things like that. So we are going to check it. So there's this little straighter valve on here where we can just uh, hook up and check the nitrogen pressure. We could do this with any kind of a uh, gauge, but I went out and bought the proper uh, equipment for this. So just ha hopped on uh, Amazon and got a gauge and all the hosing. So this will actually uh, screw on there, which is quite nice. We don't actually have to hold it on. It will just screw on. And then we have a little uh, piece that will screw in and push on the, the straighter valve itself. And we can check what the pressure is in the shock. So let me turn this in. So what we're targeting is 150 PSI. And right now this is reading, what is that? Um, 80, 70, 70 PSI. So yeah, we are quite low. And then I checked the other shock uh, recently as well, and it was also low. So we will get these topped off with uh, nitrogen. One of the nice things is that I can just jack the car up and check these. These are easy to get to. I don't actually have to pull the whole shock out to actually get to these. Uh, but since I had the shocks out from the last uh, video doing the bumps here, I decided to go ahead and check these. So I will get the bottle of nitrogen, we'll get everything hooked up and we will get these things topped off. Luckily nitrogen is pretty easy to come by. So I just went up to the pretty much any welding store and you can buy uh, bottles of nitrogen. They have all kinds of different sizes. So this is the smallest bottle that they had. Still uh, cost me like 170 bucks, but it is something that will be able to be reused for a long time. I think I'm not gonna be going through this bottle uh, very quickly at all. So why do we use nitrogen? So nitrogen is a dry gas. So that, what that means is it won't have moisture in it. So that's why we don't want to put air. Air would work just fine, but air has moisture in it. And then as things heat up, that's going to compress differently because, uh, you can compress the, the gas, but not the fluid. So that's why we use uh, nitrogen. You could use uh, nitrogen also in your tires, which would be uh, pretty nice. Then you don't have as much uh, pressure change as, as the tires heat up, but it is kind of difficult to get nitrogen into tires. For one, you would have to like try to vacuum the tires down if they were already filled with nitrogen or, or with air, I mean, or you would have to start off with nitrogen uh, filling and there's just trying to get nitrogen is kind of difficult. Like I said, you have to have a full thing. You can get uh, systems that will have, that will remove uh, nitrogen from the air because nitrogen is all around us, but those are quite expensive. I've looked into them because I was thinking that would be a simple system, but yep, that is not quite available either. Let's open this guy up. So we got 2000 uh, PSI on here. We'll uh, set this guy up a little bit over so we want to go a little bit over 150 because then we'll lose some as we are you know disconnecting and stuff like that we'll screw this guy back in 
still sit in there at 80 psi and now we are up to 180 so we'll let that sit for a little bit let it all kind of uh, naturalize make sure that we don't have any leaks don't hear anything and as I said on the dyno sheet that came with each of these shocks it says 150 psi so that is the pressure that we want to set it at because that's kind of what this was uh, dynoed at. Also not sure, you know, how accurate this gauge actually is as it is just from Amazon. But if we get it every, if we get it close, that is uh, definitely better than what it was, obviously, since we, it was reading down at uh, 70, 80 PSI. But we will get these uh, top back off the nitrogen and get them reinstalled in the car and we'll hopefully that will along with the bumps there that we've corrected last time um, hopefully the car will handle really good out of the next event but like I said this nitrogen is not a tuning tool you should be using the the spring sway bars things like that to kind of determine the the roll stiffness and the ride of the car and these are not and also, as I said, these are not uh, air shocks in any way, so this doesn't actually increase your ride height or anything like that. If they were completely drained of nitrogen, I'm sure putting topping them off will probably give us a little bit more uh, height. All right, the shock is all done. We can get it uh, reinstalled into the car, and then I need still need to do the check the other one, obviously, but. That one is uh, currently already installed in the car, but we can do this all on car. As I said, we just jack up the car, easily reach in there. We don't even take the tire off, which is really, really nice. But that is all that we need to know about uh, nitrogen pressure in the in the shocks. I've never had shocks, you know, quite to this caliber, so I didn't even know that nitrogen pressure really needed to be checked. Should have kind of known that there is the, the port on there, so to be able to check those. That is kind of uh, nice that you can get all the equipment easily. It's uh, readily accessible. So this whole setup was probably about $200. And then we have them all set, ready to go. Need to get them back onto the car, but that is it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Later.